Hi everyone, my name is Miss Kavita and I'm from the Lilburn branch of the Gwinnett County Public Library. Welcome to the fourth session of our Culture Craft series. May is Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, a celebration of Asians and Pacific Islanders in the United States and an opportunity to celebrate the rich history, honor the accomplishments while celebrating the diverse culture of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. It's a great time to learn about these cultures and the important role they play in our nation's story. We will learn more about the history of this special celebration in our presentation a little later. But here are some ways you can celebrate with your family. You can get a globe out and explore the geography of Asia and the Pacific Islands. Check out the National Park Service's Asian Pacific American Heritage website, which makes it easy for you and your family to virtually explore parks, memorials, and historic sites around the country and U.S. territories that honor extraordinary Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Read a children's book featuring Asian characters or written by an Asian author or illustrated by an Asian artist. Learn about the traditional Asian and Pacific Island music and instruments. Or check out Asian Pacific American art museums and exhibits. Or how about trying different Asian and Pacific Islander recipes? Take a virtual vacation to Asia or the Pacific Islands, from planning your itinerary to making a memory book to document all the fun you're having. You and your family can take an exciting vacation right from home. And today, we're going to learn a little more about the Korean culture. We're going to get started with a story, which is going to be followed by a presentation and a little craft. So are you ready? Well, the story that we are going to read today is called The Name Jar, and it's written by Yang Suk Choi. Through the school bus window, Unhe looked out at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day and she was both nervous and excited. She fingered the little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Unhei's tears and handed her an ink pad and a small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name? Unhei wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. As she ran her fingers along the grooves and ridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Unhei, surprising her. Unhei looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it's mine, Unhei answered, quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Unhei, said Unhei. Unhei? The girl asked, scrunching up her face. Ooh, 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 nay, some kids chanted. No, no, Unhei corrected. It's spelled U-N-H-E-I. It's pronounced Unhei. Oh, it's you hey, like you. Hey, what about hey you? Just then the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened. Unhei hurried to get off. You hey, bye bye, the kids yelled as she left. Unhe felt herself blush. Unhe stood in the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone on to other rooms, but her face still felt red. Aren't you going in? said a curly haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? he asked cheerfully. Unhe nodded. And before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl, he announced so loudly that their teacher, Mr. Kokotos, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Kokotos thanked him and greeted Unhei. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Unhei smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Unhe pictured the kids on the bus. Uh, mm, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Kokotos showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name, she heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, 
a boy replied. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Unhe kept thinking about her name. How was school, Unhe? Her mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Unhe simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you're learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you're a good Korean. I will, replied Unhe, but, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Unhe is a beautiful name. Your grandma, grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Unhe, her mother said, and that's a good thing. Unhe just wrinkled her nose. Later that day, Unhe and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed Fadil's Falafel, Tony's Pizza, and Dot's Deli. A big graffiti-painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to Kim's Market. The sign was both in English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, Korean-style spicy pickled cabbage, and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, Unhe's favorite for soup. It made Unhe smile. Just because we've moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we stop eating Korean food. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Unhe. Helping your mother with the shopping, he asked. Unhe nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said. What is your name? Unhe, she answered. Ah, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean grace? Unhe nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said, as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Unhe. That evening, Unhe stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully, then wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried as she began to brush her teeth. He, my name is Juicy, she said to the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. The next morning when Unhe arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Unhe took one out and read it aloud. Daisy. That's my baby sister's nickname, but you can use it if you want, said Cindy, who sat next to her. Unhe took out the rest of the papers. Tamela, I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. Unhe nodded and unfolded another piece. Wednesday. Yeah, you came here on Wednesday, said Ralph. Uh, thank you for your help. A smile spread over Unhe's face. Ralph quickly said, we'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like or pick them all. You'll have the longest name in history. At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day. Unhe looked out of the window and saw that it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought, but in a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. Unhe turned around to see the curly-haired boy again. I'm Joey, and you... Don't you have any name? Unhe thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said and took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Want to try it? She offered the stamp to Joey and he carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Unhe said. And then the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day the jar got fuller with more names and Unhe read them all. She found a few names she liked, like Miranda, Stella, 
Avery. They sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in, Marco told her at snack time. I put in three more, said Ralph. Madison, Park, and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned and said, that's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. Mm, everyone thought about that. Hmm. When Unhe got home from school later that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly and it said, To my Unhe, I hope you're enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here the moon is up, but there the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are, and no matter how different America is from Korea, you'll always be my Unhe, your grandma forever. Unhe took out her wooden stamp and filled the paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, Unhe walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hi, Unhe. Hello, Mr. Kim, Unhe replied. She felt as if she was back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer, turning around. It was Joey. Your name is Unhe? He asked with his eyes open wide. Unhe looked quickly at Mr. Kim, then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced Unhe. And it means grace, Mr. Kim added. Unhe, Joey said slowly and this time perfectly. It made Unhe smile. I'll have it ready for you by tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday, Unhe, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. On Monday, Unhe came to class early to look at the names one last time. But the jar wasn't on her desk. Instead, there was just a single piece of paper, paper with a name on it. Unhe slipped it in her pocket. Where's your name jar? Ralph asked as soon as he saw it was gone. I don't know. It wasn't on Mr. Cockatoo's desk or on any other desk, and it wasn't on the counters or any of the shelves. As other kids arrived, they helped to look. Soon, Mr. Cockatoo came in and Ralph shouted at him, The name jar is gone! The jar with all the names in it! Gone? Mr. Cockatoo replied. With a look of concern, he asked Unhe, Did you get a chance to read all the names? Unhe took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Unhe wrote her name in both English and Korean on the chalkboard. I like the beautiful names and funny names you thought of for me, she told the class. But I realized that I like my name the best, so I choose it again. Korean names mean something. Unhe means grace. Grace. Grace in he, shouted Ralph. Everyone tried to say it. Unhe, yenhe, anhe. Unhe said her name again slowly and clearly. Soon the kids began to say it better. Even Mr. Cockatoo's. They applauded Unhe's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Unhe. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Cockatoo's reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Unhe heard her new friends say goodbye. Bye, Unhe. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Unhe. Unhe said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Unhe, Unhe, come downstairs, mother called up to Unhe. Your friend is here. Unhe rushed down to see who she meant. There stood Joey, and in his arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? asked Unhe breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed and said, Um, well, I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name. And you did. He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? He asked. Thank you. I'll keep them as a souvenir, Unhe said happily. Then she pulled out a piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this bag? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us. Names with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Unhe. I've already got a Korean nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. 
Carefully, he pulled a small silver pouch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with, the, with beautiful Korean characters carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on the paper next to her name. Chinku, read Unhe. That means friend. And Chinku smiled back. Wasn't that a wonderful story? We will now look at a short presentation and learn a little more about the Korean culture and a simple craft. Are you ready? Asian Pacific American Heritage Month Asian Pacific American Heritage Month celebrates the achievements and contributions of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in the United States. In June 1977, a House resolution was issued to proclaim the first 10 days of May as Asian Pacific American Heritage Week. The following month, senators from Hawaii introduced a similar bill in the Senate. Both were passed, and on October 5, 1978, President Jimmy Carter signed a joint resolution designating the annual celebration. In 1990, President George H.W. Bush signed a bill passed by Congress to extend the week-long celebration to a month-long celebration. In 1992, the official designation of May as Asian Pacific American Heritage Month was signed into law. The month of May was chosen to commemorate the arrival of the first Japanese immigrants to the United States on May 7, 1843, and to mark the anniversary of the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad on May 10, 1869. The majority of workers who laid the tracks were Chinese immigrants. So... Who are we celebrating? A rather broad term, Asian Pacific encompasses all of the Asian continent, Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia. Today we're going to learn a little more about South Korea and its culture. Korea is a region in East Asia. Since 1948, it has been divided in between two distinct sovereign states, North Korea and South Korea. Korea consists of the Korean Peninsula, Jeju Island and several minor islands near the peninsula. Korea is bordered by Russia to the northeast, China to the northwest, and neighbors Japan to the east via the Korean Strait and the Sea of Japan. For many centuries, South Korea was an independent kingdom, but after 1905, the country was ruled by the Japanese. After Japan surrendered to the U.S. after the Second World War in 1945, Korea gained independence again. But the country soon was split between South Korea, which is largely supported by the U.S., and communist North Korea. The relations between the two Koreas are strained. Since 1953, South Korea's economy expanded successfully. The currency of South Korea is won, and one dollar is equivalent to 1,118 won. Geography and tourist attractions. South Korea is a mountainous country with about 70% of the land covered by hills and mountains. The capital city of South Korea is Seoul. Nam San or Nam Mountain overlooks the capital city of Seoul. The highest mountain of South Korea is called Hala San, also called Mount Hala. Halasan is a shield volcano and one of the three volcanic mountains on the Korean peninsula. South Korea sits on the ring of fire where earthquakes and volcanic eruptions occur. Halasan, located on the island of Jeju, is an active volcano. However, it has not erupted in many centuries. Jeju is the largest South Korean island and located to the south of the peninsula. It has moderate climate and is a popular holiday destination. There are more than 3,000 islands, mainly off the southern and western coastlines of South Korea. Bukjon Hanok Village is the preserved old quarter and traditional Korean village, which is a must-see. Here you will also find the Gyeongbokgung Palace. Busan is a large port city in the southern part of the country. In South Korea's second biggest city, you can do your shopping and temple tours, but also relax at some stunning beaches. Saraksan National Park is another great place to marvel at nature for its breathtaking mountains and snow caps. There's also a huge Great Unification Buddha statue which weighs over 108 tons and is 14.6 or 48 feet high. Pyeongchang is a winter resort in the northeastern region of South Korea. The city was one of the sites for the Winter Olympics in 2018. 
The city is a popular winter holiday resort and can be reached via the Korean bullet train from Seoul. Did you know that the Olympic mascot, a white Siberian tiger, was called Suharang, which loosely translates as protection tiger? Culture and traditions. Korea has one of the oldest cultures in the world. Koreans have passed down their traditions and stories for centuries. It has been shaped by different dynasties, wars, changes in religious, religious beliefs, and modernization of the world as a whole. Some of the South Korean traditional arts are a variety of dance, paintings, craft, music, cinema, clothes, and cuisine. Let's take a look at each one briefly. Dance. There are several different dances in Korean culture, like folk dance, court dance, ritual dance, new traditional dance, and modern dance. The most popular of these is a fan dance called Bachechum. It's a type of neoclassical Korean dance that is based on various historical and religious dances. It's usually performed by groups of female dancers. This dance is performed at many celebrations and events in Korea and has become popular worldwide. Dancers use large fans, pink blossoms to create various formations that represent images such as birds, flowers, butterflies, dragons, and waves. Dancers wear brightly colored hanbok, Korean traditional dress. This dance is usually performed with folk song or, or an instrumental solo, though court and ritual music is often used as well. The dance is known for showcasing the elegant and graceful aspects of classical technique in a format suitable for modern audiences. Paintings. The earliest paintings found on the Korean peninsula are petroglyphs of prehistoric times. With the arrival of Buddhism from India via China, different techniques were introduced. These techniques quickly established themselves as the mainstream techniques, but indigenous techniques still survived. Among them were the Goguryeo tomb murals. These murals inside many of the tombs are an invaluable insight into the ceremonies, warfare, architecture, and daily life of ancient people. Arts are both influenced by tradition and realism, and new genres of Korean painting flourished. Craft. There is a unique set of handicrafts produced in Korea. Most of the handicrafts are created for a particular everyday use, often giving priority to the practical use rather than aesthetics. Traditionally, metal, wood, fabric, Earthenware were main materials used, but later glass, leather, or paper have sporadically been used as well. Ancient handicrafts such as red and black pottery share similarities with the pottery of Chinese cultures. Popular handicrafts were made of porcelain and decorated with blue painting. Korean furniture represents one of the great woodworking and design heritages of Asia and the world. Music the music of Korea refers to music from the Korean peninsula ranging from prehistoric times to the division of Korea into South and North in 1945. Together, traditional music is referred to as guguk, which literally means national music. Korean folk music is typically referred to as panseri, which is performed by one singer and one drummer. Some panseri songs also include dancers and or narrators. Another type of folk music is Pangmal, which involves drumming, singing, and dancing. K-pop is short for Korean pop, Korea's response to Western mainstream music. The music itself samples different genres from rock and jazz to hip-hop and techno, influenced by worldwide trends. However, despite the influences, K-pop is also quite different from Western pop, with idol groups being its leading force. From hairstyling to dance moves and music videos, there is often a specific theme behind each single or album release, which also influences the mood and tune of the songs. Cinema When speaking of Korean cinema, it usually counts the time from 1945 onward. The movies take a lot of influence from Korea's own past, featuring a lot of material from the Japanese occupation, the Korean War, the road toward democratization and globalization, and so on. Although there are still some shyness put to certain materials on film, Korean filmmakers are bold in expressing their views of society through internationally well-received music like The Handmaiden and Parasite. The Busan International Film Festival has also grown to become Asia's largest and most important film festival. Clothes. The traditional dress is known as hanbok and has been worn since ancient, ancient times. It consists of a shirt and a skirt. Hanbok are classified according to their purposes. Everyday dress, ceremonial dress, and special dress. 
ceremonial dresses are worn on formal occasions including a child's first birthday, wedding or a funeral. Today, the hanbok is still worn during formal occasions. Everyday use of the dress, however, has been lost. Elderly as well as active estates of the remnant of aristocratic families still dress in hanbok. However, while it may continue to change, hanbok retains a glorious cultural heritage, which is not only valuable for its historical value and the preservation of Korean traditional clothes, but also its uniquely Korean artistic significance. Cuisine Rice is a staple food of Korea. Having been an almost exclusively agricultural country until recently, the essential recipes in Korea are shaped by this experience. The main crops in Korea are rice, barley, and beans, but many supplementary crops are used as well. Gochujang is a hot pepper paste and is used in most Korean food, which is made out of fermented soybeans and glutinous rice. Fish and other seafood are also important because Korea is a peninsula. Fermented recipes were also developed in early times and often characterized traditional Korean food. These include pickled fish and pickled vegetables. This kind of food provides essential proteins and vitamins during the winter. Kimchi is one of the famous foods of Korea. Kimchi is pickled vegetables which contain vitamin A and C, iron, calcium and much more. There are many types of kimchi including cabbage kimchi, spring onion kimchi, cucumber cream chi, and radish kimchi. Street food. Street food in South Korea has traditionally been seen as a part of its popular culture. Historically, street food mainly has been sold through many types of retail outlets, with new ones being developed over time. Usually run by an ajasi or an ajuma or older men and women, these popular stalls have become an integral part of Korea's famous culture. Some popular street food dishes include pyonggopang, the fish-shaped bun, omuk, which is a fish cake mixture, hotok, which is a traditional street food in South Korea and it's normally eaten in the winter. Uh, it's made out of a dough filled with cinnamon-flavored raw sugar and of course the tteokbokki, which is a stir-fried rice cake. That was fun. Let's now make a craft and we are going to make a traditional Korean paper plate drum. All you need for this is two paper plates, paint or crayons, scissors, wooden beads or bells, a pencil, some string, glue and a craft stick or a chopstick. All you have to do is draw the shape shown on the back of the paper plates, color or paint them red, blue and yellow as shown in this picture. Inside the two plates, glue the stick vertically in the center, glue a piece of string on each side of the paper plates, thread the bead or jingle bells at the end of each string, glue the plates hollow side facing each other. Once it's dry, roll the stick to rotate the drum back and forth for the beads or the bells to hit the drum plates, creating a Korean drum. That was wonderful. I hope you enjoyed watching this program as much as I did presenting it. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.